Hey, what's going on? It's Evan here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to create UVs for the interior faces of a fractured object. All right, so I have a blank scene open. We're going to start off just by uh, dropping down a box because that's what we're going to be using as our fracture object, just a simple box. So let's go ahead and give this UVs. So I'm going to use a UV unwrap node. And we're going to put the spacing to zero. If you want to switch between the UV viewport and the perspective viewport, you can use that by hitting space five to go to the UV and then space one to go back to the regular viewport. And in order to see our UVs a bit better, we're going to use the color grid instead of the gray or the black and white. So we're going to use the RBD fracture node. And we're going to connect that up and we're only going to be using one fracture level so we can hit this X button and we're going to set this to 30. And then we're going to put the display flag on that node. And in order to see the interior faces, we can use the exploded view node. Now let's turn up the uniform scale just so that we can see a little bit better on the inside. So we do have UVs on the outside, but we can see that the UVs on the interior faces are a little bit wonky and distorted. And so that's what we're going to be fixing. Something that's cool about the RBD fracture node is that it creates a group for the interior faces. So this problem seems like it would be simple to solve. So if we use the labs auto UV and we run this and we can see that it messed up our UVs on the outside and that's just because we need to select the interior group. So we're going to select the inside. All right, perfect. So now let's go back to the UV viewport. Well, things aren't quite so simple. It's not actually laying out the UVs very well. They're kind of just they're just not that great and to make matters even worse if we actually add detail to our fracture because like right now these don't look realistic at all there's no detail so if we go to our material fracture and go to detail and we actually add edge detail and then go back to the uv attribute it looks even worse they're just completely awful yeah the, these uvs are just a mess and you, you can try messing around with the grain tolerance and the merge threshold but you're not really gonna get great results. This auto UV is a digital asset and it contains multiple nodes on the inside. When you set this group to inside, unfortunately, this isn't applying to all of the nodes within this digital asset. And I think that's where the problem lies. The heart of this auto UV digital asset is basically only three nodes. It's the seams node and then the UV flatten node and then the UV layout node. So we can actually just recreate this ourselves very easily. So to do that, let's go ahead and delete this. And we're going to go back to our regular viewport. And for now, I'm just going to disable our unwrap node because we're going to be focusing on the interior faces. So let's go back to the exploded view. The node that we want is the labs auto. Oh, actually, that's not what is it called? Auto seams. All right. So it's called UV auto seam. And you'll notice that these settings actually, or these controls right here actually are the same uh, controls that are exposed on the, the labs auto UV asset. So these, these are the exact same things. If you drop down the labs auto UV, you can see grain tolerance merge threshold. It's the same controls that you see here. Um, so let's, let's put the, the display flag on here and switch to the handles tool. And what we need to do is make sure that it's only doing the interior so for, for the group right here, let's go ahead and select inside. And so now it's going to be creating seams on the interior faces. Now the next thing that we're going to do is use a UV flatten. And we're going to connect that in. And it's kind of annoying how it automatically uh, splits the view. So if you get off the handle tool and just go back to the select, it, it should just go back to how you have it normally. And so now I'm going to hit space five. And let's see, do we have the group? Yep, we set the group for that. And so likewise, we also need to set the group here to inside. And it got really small, but don't worry about that. We're going to fix that. Now, remember how we, cre we created those seams? We can actually use those on the UV flatten node. So let's go to UV flatten. And then we're going to where it says seams. We can go find those seams that we created. And... Uh, it's going to be it's actually at the bottom, but if, if your list is if you have a lot of pieces You may not be able to find it, but you can just come here and type in seams and then that will uh, do, Essentially do the same thing. And so now let's hit space 5 and These pieces are a lot better 
but the problem is it's kind of hard to see them because they're all small. And so that's where the UV layout node comes in. So let's go ahead and drop that down. And wow, this is looking so much better than what we had before. And also we need to make sure that this is only affecting the inside group. So let's turn on the inside. And so now if we go up here and then if we re-enable this node, uh, now we can see all of our UVs are showing. And this is so much better than what we had before. So let's go back to space five. So now you can go back to the auto seams node and you can play around with these different settings to see what you to see what you like or what works best. And something that I'd recommend is that if you're working with a whole bunch of chunks, it can be really slow to run all these nodes. So what I like to do is uh, we can disable this node temporarily. And then let's hit space uh, F to frame our selection. And then if we, if we switch to the selection tool, and then where it says select, do 3D connected geometry. And then that way we can actually select chunks. And so let me just select a few of these chunks right here. And then I'm gonna hit delete. And then I'm gonna hit delete non-selected. So that basically it's gonna, the what we selected is gonna be what's kept. And then now we can just run, well actually I'm gonna, uh, what's it called, cut this wire. And I'm actually gonna put this this blast before and then now you see we can run these nodes, but only on these few chunks. And also that makes it easier to see. And then it will, of course, run much faster too, because we're only doing this on a small set of nodes. I just wanted to point out, this is just another scene that I'm working on, is that you don't have to use the seams from the auto seam. If, if they look better without the seams, then, go, then by all means, don't use it. Uh, in this example right here, I was getting too many shells. And so I just decided, let me switch the display flag. Um, these big huge shells are, are just from the, the top face of the geometry. So just ignore them. But, but you can see that I'm getting much fewer shells than if I have the seam. So it, it's entirely up to you on whether or not you use the seams or not. So I would just toggle them on and off and see which one works best for you. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I was trying to do this uh, for a project that I'm working on now and like I was trying to get the labs auto UV to work and I, I just wasn't having any luck and so I, I just tried manually using these three nodes and it worked so much better. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you.